So before we get into week 12 waiver wire pickups, I've got some major housekeeping announcements to make right now. And I dropped that at the end of the live stream yesterday. And that was like a 49 minute live stream. So if anyone hung out at until like the 46th minute, I started talking about it. But this is the official announcement. BDGE Global is expanding. We're opening our first physical office in Italy. No, we're getting uh, an office here in New York City. We're getting a real office. We are becoming a real company. We're already a real company, but it's really a one man show at this point with few people helping me out majorly behind the scenes and some people on camera. But in 2022, January, February, sometime in that frame, we are getting a real office out here in New York City. We will be making four to five full-time hires outside of myself. So we're bringing on a real staff to work on this shit full-time, and it's going to be wild. This is going to be a crazy fucking few years, probably until I'm dead. And then Animal gets control of the company. That being said, we will be hiring almost all the positions that I have in mind already in-house. We are looking for one person outside of who I currently work with as a web developer. We are hiring a full-stack web developer. Okay, so if any of you guys are in the fantasy industry or, you know, are avid fantasy fans, what I want to do is hire from in house, like in our audience already that's familiar with the brand, which is familiar with the industry and fantasy football, etc. The other thing, I know there's going to be a lot of hungry ass college kids, and I respect that. You know, you might have just graduated or you're about to finish up your degree in computer science or whatever. We're looking for somebody with more experience. We're looking for somebody who's had their feet in the sand already, who have dug a little bit, who have, you know, have worked on tools, not necessarily tools, but have the full stack repertoire and have really put all of it to use. I'm talking about from hosting problems to fucking, when I say problems, that's, that's what a job is. You just solve problems all day. Hosting stuff to understanding WordPress to back end and front, like all this shit we're looking for encapsulated UI UX preferably as well. There will be a more official, obviously application and shit, but I just want to throw it out there for any of y'all that are in the space. So if you don't have real experience, probably not a good fit. If you just graduated from college, you know, and you have like a year under your belt, listen, maybe you're the real fucking deal. So reach out to me. But if you're really just like trying to say you're fucking proficient at Microsoft Excel to sneak in the door for an interview, don't waste either of our times, please. But this will be a real full-time position, likely in New York. So you may have to relocate, but we could figure that out on the go. All right. So that's the exciting housekeeping news. The exciting other news is that we are talking about waiver wire for week 12. Monday Night Football is about to kick off in 10 minutes. So I want to wrap this up before then. I will be watching, of course. It is nighttime. There's a reason I'm wearing these glasses. Anytime after the sun goes down, if it's within like three hours of bedtime, I promise for your health, if you want to live past the age, this is a guaranteed, this is actually approved by the FDA, this following statement. If you want to live past the age of 35, you have to buy a pair of blue light glasses. All right. It's for your health. It's for your health. FDA approved. It's not FDA approved. I feel like I have to say that because then Felix Gray might get mad at me. But these things, these things don't come off my face once the nighttime comes down. They're blue light glasses. I'm sure you've heard the word, the phrase, the slogan throughout the last couple of years because they've, be, they've become popularized. Do you know why things become popular? Because they fucking work. They're good. Okay. Blue light glasses. What they do is they block the blue light from your screens. Right now, it's like 830 and I'm looking at a laptop. I'm looking at a camera screen. I'm looking at a monitor. I'm looking at a big light. I'm looking at my phone screen. I'm looking at my TV. A lot of lights going on. And in the world we live in today, all y'all are probably looking at lights 24 seven. You're going back to the office. You're looking at multiple monitors again. These protect your eye strain, but more importantly, they protect your sleep. If you're someone who's like in your bed watching Netflix on your laptop or looking at your phone and fucking scrolling down Twitter and looking at my stupid, dumbass tweets, you need to protect yourself from me is what you need to do. Protect yourself from my tweets with these glasses because when you block blue light, it helps you produce melatonin. All right. And melatonin helps you fall asleep. OK, you've heard of melatonin. These are what help produce that. You don't want to be staring at screens. It's going to strain your eyes. It's going to ruin your fucking sleep, okay? And Felix Gray, for like the first time ever, not ever, but they very, 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 very rarely ever, ever, ever have coupon codes. And they do for Black Friday week, okay? For the next like seven days, if you use the link, that's the first link in the description, it'll enter a promo code for you. You're gonna enter everything 15. Everything, one word, the number is 15, one five, okay? Use the link down below. Everything 15 will get you 15% off. If you have prescription, they have blue light blocking prescription glasses as well. Kill two as well. Till kill till ooh, baby. I like you. Raw. Kill two birds with un stone with one glasses. Okay? 
These don't come off my face at night and they should not come off your face either. These are the number one product that I recommend in the whole world, FDA approved. Week 12, waiver wire. Y'all know what to do. Tuck your shirts in. That was my underwear that I just tucked it into. I'm allowed to do that. It's my fucking job. I could do whatever I want. All right. So if you're a full stack developer and you want to be able to tuck your shirt into your underwear on the job, this is the job for you. So we tucked our shirts in. Now we stop yelling. Let's see. All right. So our uh, in-depth waiver wire, you know, fab guidance articles up on our site right now for our members on bdge.store forward slash community. We did something new this week, and I think it's what I'm going to do going forward. So those of y'all that are members already, let me know how you like this table. I think it's actually way more helpful. It's actually, believe it or not, a little bit less work for us because it kind of makes everything way more efficient. We have this table. We'll put a little screenshot on the television, but it's basically the players, their position, their positional rank and overall rank in terms of waiver wire pickup their team, the fab that we would recommend spending on them, whether or not you'd use the number one waiver wire priority on them, relevant injuries, and their next three opponents. So this is up on the site right now if you already are a member. So what we're going to be doing is kind of going through just like the story of what the waiver wire is this week and how you guys should approach it. There's always going to be 10 dudes at the end of the waiver wire that I could be like, this guy's been okay, this guy's been okay, this guy has an opportunity, but I don't want to waste everybody's time. So we want to get into the heavy hitters, the ones that you need to be targeting at each position. First up, Mr. Cam Bam Newton, of course, goes off, comes bike in Carolina, first game, first full game, two passing touchdowns, one rushing touchdowns, 46 yards on the ground, looked, I don't want to say vintage, vintage Cam Newton, all right? If, if you know, if they sell like vintage ACDC, maybe this was like vintage Nickelback. That's, you know, Cam was vintage Nickelback on this play. Nickelback gets a bad rap, man. They're, they're pretty fucking good musicians. I don't know why, I don't, why is everybody so fucking angry at Nickelback all the time? It's corny. Nickelback's good, all right? And so is Cam. Cam looked good. Cam had a great connection with Christian McCaffrey. Saw a little chemistry there with DJ Moore. He just looked way more comfortable in Carolina. If you're in a super flex league, he is my number one waiver wire pickup this week. 28 fantasy points in his first full game. There is more goodness coming from there. They have a really, you know, favorable schedule the next two matchups. Miami, they do get the bye, then Atlanta. But two very usable games off the rip. They have a very tough stretch at the end of the year, weeks 15, 16, 17. So beware on that front. But if you need a QB2 and you're in a super flex league and this secures your lineup, I know a lot of people probably struggling with that right now. I know a lot of the top teams in the E-Town get down are struggling at the quarterback position. So this could be like a saving grace. Ramondre Stevenson is another guy who's probably not available, but if he is, you're looking to capitalize on Ramondre Stevenson. Because here's the thing. They're a committee. They're a full-blown committee. Stevenson, Damian Harris, a little bit of Brandon Bolden, but for the most part, it's the two bangers up front. Ramondre Stevenson has looked, you know, I don't want to say he's been better than Damian Harris because Damian Harris, it's it's hard to say anything negative about him because I've been as big of a fan of Damian Harris as any. He's been on most of my must draft lists in the beginning of the year. He's a beast. He looks great every time he's on the fucking field. With Damian Harris, though, only one of these guys has real league winning upside and it ain't Harris. I mean, he has real, you know, high end RB2 type upside, but Ramondre Stevenson, something were to happen to Damian Harris, Stevenson has the three down capability. Stevenson has not only a three down capability because a lot of players have that. Damian Harris has that. But Ramondre Stevenson has already shown that if he gets that starting role, he's actually going to be given the three down role. So Ramondre Stevenson has immense upside that Damian Harris simply does not. So Ramondre is a guy that you can probably start standalone value in a lot of games going forward. I think he will continue to chip away at Brandon Bolden's role and a little bit of Damian Harris's role. So I expect 10 to 12 touches going forward, two to three of them a game, probably in the passing down situation. So he's my number one running back pickup for the week. Now we have a couple New York Jets players, okay? We have Elijah Moore and we have Ty Johnson. Now, Ty Johnson becomes relevant because Michael Carter is dealing with a high ankle sprain, which will keep him out probably two to three weeks. Tevin Coleman out carry Ty Johnson in this one five to one, but I'd rather look at the seasonal sample size than just a one game sample size. And Ty Johnson has been the premier pass catcher in this backfield when it's not Michael Carter. So Ty Johnson, I expect to, maybe he splits carries with Tevin Coleman. Maybe Tevin Coleman's the early down guy here, but Ty Johnson got the size. He's got the explosive. He basically tops Tevin Coleman in everything needed to be a successful NFL running back, okay? He's the guy who's getting the passing down work. So give me Ty Johnson over Tevin Coleman and give me Ty Johnson over basically any other running back in the free agent market for this week. The two top wide receivers, without a doubt for me, are Elijah Moore and Darnell Mooney. First of all, Elijah Moore's next three games, Houston, Philly, Atlanta. You can 
scorch opponents with that fucking slate of games right there. Elijah Moore has four touchdowns over his last three games. Breakout continues. Over his last three games, 18 catches on 25 targets, 269 yards, and again, four touchdowns. He's here to stay. He's like showing he's quarterback proof. Doesn't matter who the fuck you throw in there. Joe Flacco, Mike White, nothing. Nothing. The dude is not phased. He's showing us why he came in as such a talented rookie. He's showing us why he was hyped up, making explosive plays down the field, involved in the screen game, doing it all. They're finally letting him play like 80 plus percent of the snaps. Again, here to stay. Michael Gallup should not be available on your wire, but in case he is, this is a knock on the fucking obvious here. Cooper and CeeDee Lamb are both like 95% out. I believe they're both technically out because for CeeDee Lamb, the concussion, I believe you need five days to clear it, which won't be in time for Thursday. They play on Thanksgiving. And uh, Amari Cooper, the COVID 10 days, whatever, he's not going to be ready either. So Michael Gallup's going to be their de facto one. So if he's available, you obviously pick him up right away as well. Darnell Mooney, super interesting because Allen Robinson did not play or did not practice at all last week. So with him out, he's likely going to miss this game on Thursday because he's playing on Thanksgiving too. Short week, I expect Arnold Mooney to be the one again. Andy Dalton, he's going to be the quarterback. Most of Mooney's targets came from Andy Dalton. The 60-yard touchdown, which was all Mooney who's on a screenplay, came from Dalton. So Mooney is right there. 16 targets in this last fucking game made no sense whatsoever, but... You know, I picked him up, started him in, in the E-Town get down. Gotta love that shit. You know, you're hoping for seven points. You get 18. It's like fucking Christmas morning. Let's go. Darnell Mooney. To the fucking moon, baby. The rest of the list is kind of trash, to be honest with you. It's kind of littered with wide receiver three flex plays. You have guys like Van Jefferson, who's likely owned. LaVisca Chenault gets a little bit interesting because Jamal Agnew's out for the year now, and LaVisca will probably go back into that like hybrid role, so I would pick him up. Marquez Valdez-Scantling looked great in the first time back with as like the actual wide receiver two in this offense, so he's a guy I would definitely grab. The top tight end pickup this week is Adam Troutman. Actually, no, I lied. Adam Troutman's out four to six weeks. Uh, which means, I guess by de facto, that makes Austin Hooper my top tight end this week because Donovan Peoples-Jones is hurt, Anthony Schwartz is hurt, now Jarvis Landry re-injured his knee. I don't really know how serious it is. So he might literally be the only target for Baker Mayfield to throw to. He might throw for 111 yards, but Austin Hooper probably going to have like 45 of them and the only touchdown that Baker Mayfield throws. Uh, they play at Baltimore, which is a team that you can throw the ball against. Ugly, ugly week for tight ends because Troutman is now hurt. My favorite non optimally owned defense at this point for this upcoming week would be Dallas at home against Las Vegas. Okay. I like Dallas as a streamer. All the other streamers are good defenses that are probably already owned. And there's like 10 other names, 12 other names on this list of waiver wire pickups for you. Some deeper cuts like DJ Dallas and Cedric Wilson. You can get more info on them if you sign up for the membership, which also gets you my weekly rankings, etc. BDGE.store forward slash community. I also think in super flex leagues, if Taysom Hill was dropped, I would pick him back up for a few dollars because Trevor Simeon just looked okay, but he's not winning the fucking games. And in the NFL, we need to win games and Taysom Hill just got paid like he does something for his fucking t team. I don't, I don't know what that is, but we're going to pay you if you're a full stack developer, right? So if you're a full stack developer and want a job with BDGE, email us info at bigdogsfantasy.com info at bigdogsfantasy.com. Make sure you check out Felix Gray. Use the link down below. Use everything 15 for 15% off your purchase. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed the video. I love y'all. I'm out. Fuck everybody in the comments. It's going to be like, you three minutes to talk about a fucking job description. This is the waiver. Why? Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck <laughs> you.